The Owen Sound Transportation Company, Ltd. was the forerunner of the enterprise that currently operates the vehicle and passenger ferry, M.S. Kai Chiman, between Tobermory on the Bruce Peninsula, and South Baymouth on Manitoulin Island. For updated information, see the article on the M.S. Kai Chiman. The Owen Sound Transportation Company was established by businessmen in the Owen Sound area, in 1921. These included W. G. Hay, President, J. H. Hay, Vice President, and J. Garvey, Secretary Treasurer. These three men were also associated with the Owen Sound-based North American Bent Chair Company. Their objective was to use the company's steamboat, S.S. Machipicotin, in freight only service from Owen Sound to isolated communities along the north shore of Lake Huron and Manitoulin Island. It is likely the intended purpose of the navigation company was to procure the materials necessary for the manufacture of the North American Bent Chair Company's Bentwood furniture, as well as the transportation of packaged freight from Owen Sound. It was the objective of the officers of the firm to carry on the business of the furniture manufacturer as a subsidiary of Owen Sound Transportation Company OSTC. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Owen Sound Transportation Company Limited. Early in 1921, a rumor circulated through Owen Sound a new steamboat line was being formed to re-establish cruises to the popular tourist destination of Mackinac Island. Promoted by a Collingwood steamship line, from the late 19th century until about 1903 these steamboat excursions crossing Lake Huron were popular from the Georgian Bay area. But it was not until the spring of 1926 that Captain Norman McKay arranged a public meeting through the Owen Sound Board of Trade to raise funds for the purchase of a steamship and refit it for reopening direct traffic between Owen Sound and other points on the Mackinac route. In 1926 the Owen Sound Transportation Company Limited was granted supplementary letters patent, under the Ontario Companies Act, increasing its authorized capital stock from $40,000 to $150,000. In 1926 the OSTC purchased the steel-hulled, screw steamer SS. Mud Jessica, a former Lake Ontario excursion boat, intended as a day cruiser. The ship had been laid up since 1924, following a serious collision in Toronto Harbour. Repaired and outfitted for service, the Modjeska arrived at Owen Sound late in the season, but with time enough to operate a few excursions, as well as two round trips to Sault Ste. Marie. Over the following winter, the ship was equipped with cabins and staterooms to accommodate up to 150 passengers. Renamed S.S. Manitoulin, she began her first full season June 6, 1927, with Norman McKay serving as captain. Norman McKay of Owen Sound, was not working on the Great Lakes at the time the company was first incorporated in 1921. In 1918 he had accepted an appointment as captain of the SS Kenora, which he delivered from Davy Shipbuilding in Quebec to British Columbia and operated it between Vancouver and Vancouver Island for its first few years before returning to Owen Sound. Topic. Cruising the North Channel The weekly schedule of the SS. Manitoulin began with an 11.15 p.m. Monday departure from Owen Sound, arriving Tuesday morning at Killarney, then through the North Channel, calling at Manitowaning, Little Current, Gore Bay, Meldrum Bay, Cockburn Island, Hilton Beach, Richards Landing, and Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, arriving at Mackinac Island, on Wednesday evening. Returning over the same route with departure from Mackinac Island at 11 a.m. Thursday, the Manitoulin arrived at Owen Sound on Saturday morning at 4.30. 
Weekend trips on the Manitoulin departed 11.15 p.m. Saturday, with calls at Killarney, Manitowaining and Little Current, followed by arrival back in Owen Sound at 4.30 Monday morning. The SS. Machipicotin continued on an unscheduled freight-only service between Owen Sound and Sault Ste. Marie, calling at Manitoulin Island and North Shore ports. The Machipicotin was destroyed by fire at the Cook's Dock, near Silverwater on Manitoulin Island, on October 11, 1927. To replace the Machipicotin, the OSTC purchased the SS. Macassa, then under the ownership of the Canada Steamship Lines subsidiary Richelieu and Ontario Navigation Company. The Macassa had completed her season on September 30, 1927, operating as a day excursion steamer between Toronto and Hamilton. The Macassa was originally part of the Toronto and Hamilton Steamboat Company, along with her sister ship, the SS. Majeska. Over the following winter in Toronto, she was converted for the accommodation of overnight passengers. Renamed SS. Manasu, she departed from Toronto for Owen Sound on April 16, 1928. The 1928 OSTC schedule for the SS. Manitoulin continued as it had the previous year, while the Manasu departed Owen Sound on Thursdays at 11.15 p.m. for a run that did not include Mackinac Island. After completing her northward voyage at Sault Ste. Marie, the Manasu returned to Owen Sound at 4.30 Tuesday mornings. On September 15, 1928, the Manasu foundered near Griffith Island in Georgian Bay. While fighting a heavy storm, she capsized when her cargo of 116 cattle apparently shifted to one side, overbalancing her. The recent addition of increased passenger accommodations on her upper deck is also thought to have contributed to her instability. She sank quickly. The bodies of her cattle are said to have stocked many a winter larder along the shores that year. All five of the survivors drifted for 60 hours in a life raft before being picked up by the CPR's SS. Manitoba. Topic. Ferry service to Manitoulin Island From the commencement of their operations, the SS. Manitoulin in 1927 and the SS. Manasu in 1928 were capable of transporting automobiles. A competitor to the Owen Sound Transportation Company, the Dominion Transportation Company, also operated a pair of passenger and package freight vessels out of Owen Sound, over much the same route as the OSTC. In 1927 an automobile ferry, the SS. Winona, provided service from Cutler to Gore Bay. Another automobile ferry serving Manitoulin Island was John Tacabury's M.S. Alice, which sailed on a return route from Owen Sound, via Wyerton, Lion's Head, Tobermory to South Baymouth, and Providence Bay. Throughout the 1927 season, Tacabury operated the M.S. Alice on the run to Providence Bay. He was, however, unsatisfied with the performance of the ship. Anxious to dispose of her, Tacabury sold the Alice to the Booth Fisheries Corporation of Canada Limited on April 3, 1928. Renamed M.S. Hibu to bring her in line with the other ships of the Dominion Fleet S.S. Caribou and S.S. Manitou. Hibu. Being the French word for. Owl. She was operated for Booth by a subsidiary company, the Dominion Transportation Company Limited DTC. She served Dominion's routes from Owen Sound to Manitoulin Island and the ports of Lake Huron's North Channel. Topic: <laughs> Tobermory South Baymouth Ferry Service. In 1930, Captain R. Vitti and H. W. 
Harmer, of Southampton, Ontario, obtained a charter for the Georgian Bay and Manitoulin Transportation Company. They had purchased John Tackabury's S.S. Henry Pedwell. The steamer was taken to Midland where it was widened and its gangway modified to accommodate automobiles. Later that summer the Henry Pedwell was placed in ferry service between Tobermory and South Baymouth. With the 1930 season underway, OSTC purchased a retired Detroit Fire Department fire boat named the SS. James R. Elliott, delivering it to the Midland Shipbuilding Company for conversion into a combination package freighter and passenger ferry. Replacing her boiler and steam engine with a new diesel engine increased her freight capacity and enabled her to transport automobiles. Overnight passenger cabins were also added. In 1931 the vessel was renamed the M.S. Normac, after the OSTC's general manager Norman McKay, captain of the SS. Manitoulin. The MS. Normac began her scheduled route on July 16, 1931, taking the place formerly assigned to the SS Manasu, leaving Owen Sound at 11.15 p.m. Thursdays and returning at 4.30 a.m. on the following Tuesday. Meanwhile, with the SS. Manitoulin continuing her weekly Monday evening departures from Owen Sound, the OSTC also acquired the service of the Georgian Bay and Manitoulin Transportation Company and its steamer the SS. Henry Pedwell, which they renamed SS. Kagawang. The Kagawang was returned to the Tobermory, South Baymouth Auto Ferry Route during the 1931 July to September season. During early and late seasons she operated on the Sault Ste. Marie route from Tuesday evening to Saturday morning, with weekend trips to Providence Bay. From 1932 the summer-only ferry service between Tobermory and South Baymouth was assigned to the M.S. Normac, which sailed the route sturdily and steadfastly for the next 30 seasons. The owners of the S.S. Kagawang, Viti and Harmer, defaulted on the mortgage held on the ship by its previous owner, and it was relinquished back to John Takabury. Dominion Transportation Company operated its M.S. Hibu between Owen Sound and Providence Bay until 1933, when it was assigned to other duties. John Takabury operated his S.S. Islet Prince over the same route, although this ship was better known as a Pelee Island ferry. In 1936 the Owen Sound Transportation Company Limited and its competitor, the Owen Sound-based Dominion Transportation Company Limited, managed by R. V. Malloy, decided to merge their operations. Together the two companies, under the joint management of McKay and Malloy, operated a pool passenger freight service to Georgian Bay and North Channel ports and continuing through the Sioux Locks and into Lake Superior to Machipicoten, as well as the auto ferry service between Tobermory and South Baymouth. The M.S. Hibu did not run much during the early spring of 1936, in June she was placed on the Tobermory ferry service. The previous year the Hibu had operated as a ferry and excursion boat out of Kingston where most of its staterooms on the promenade deck had been removed to make room for sightseers and dancing. With the loss of her cabins, the Hibu was best suited for day use such as the ferry route it shared with the M.S. Normac. On November 16, 1936, the Hibu made her last run on the ferry crossing and returned to Owen Sound, from where it was to take a few more trips to Killarney and Manitoulin Island. It was dangerously late in the navigation season and the only ships of the pool service still in operation were the Hibu and Normac, S.S. Manitou, S.S. Caribou and S.S. Manitoulin having already gone into winter quarters at Owen Sound. Captain Norman McKay took command of the Hibu while her regular captain, James Agnew, moved back to the position of first officer. 
On its second trip to Killarney on Saturday, November 21, the cargo onboard Hibu shifted while she was operating in relatively calm waters, causing her to founder and sink only 10 minutes out of Owen Sound. It is thought that while testing the accuracy of a new compass, Captain McKay had made a sharp turn to the port side, causing the cargo to shift to starboard. The ship listed to starboard, and did not recover. In the ensuing tragedy, not only the Hibu, but seven of the 17-member crew, and Captain McKay himself, were lost. Topic. New management. The pool agreement between the two navigation companies continued through the 1930s and into the 1940s. The SS Manitou served on the Tobermory ferry route from 1937 until 1941 when it was retired, being replaced by Dominion Transportation Company's SS Caribou. The SS Manitoulin carried on its regular scheduled route from Owen Sound along the Turkey Trail of the North Channel, but instead of terminating at Mackinac Island, she continued through the Sioux Locks and proceeded to Gargatua Harbor, and Machipicoten. The 1936 pool arrangement between the two companies had been suggested by Ivor Wagner, a director of Booth Fisheries Corporation in Chicago. Wagner purchased the Dominion Transportation Company Limited in 1937 and moved to Owen Sound the following year. In 1944 the outstanding shares of the Owen Sound Transportation Company Limited were acquired by Dominion Transportation Company. Ivor Wagner had managed both firms since 1937, although absent from the area while he served overseas in the Canadian Army during World War II. He returned to Owen Sound in January 1945 to resume his responsibility as president and general manager of both companies. Other directors included W.W. Barnard of Owen Sound, employed by OSTC since 1927, who served as Vice President and Manager of Operations. Mr. W. W. Barnard became President of the company at the beginning of 1969, W. A. Alexander, Secretary Treasurer, who had been with Dominion Transportation Company since 1924, and William Owens, Chief Engineer, who had a lengthy connection with both firms, beginning with his association with the SS. Manitou when the ship was constructed in 1903. Mr. Owens had been Chief Engineer of OSTC since 1926. The two concerns remained separate entities until the last DTC vessel, the SS Caribou, was sold at the end of the 1946 season. In September 1946 a new ship, the SS Norisle, the name being derived from North Manitoulin Island, was put in service on the ferry route. Designed and built by the Collingwood Shipyards Limited for OSTC, the Norisle had a capacity of up to 50 automobiles and 250 passengers. Having more than twice the capacity of the SS. Caribou and MS. Normac combined, it was expected this new ship could handle the Tobermory, South Baymouth auto ferry route alone, however, because of an unanticipated increase in the volume of car traffic after the war, the Normac continued in service with the Norisle. Like her predecessors the Norisle was also equipped with staterooms for the accommodation of up to 100 passengers, enabling her to be used also on the Owen Sound, Sault Ste. Marie route during early and late navigation seasons. The SS Manitoulin continued to navigate the Turkey Trail of the North Channel from Owen Sound until its honorable and well-deserved retirement in 1949. Turkey Trail 
was by then the affectionate term for the North Channel route, some say because a large number of turkeys were transported from Manitoulin's island ports along the North Shore during the years immediately following World War II, and others because the ships serving the isolated ports of the North Channel wandered across the Channel like turkeys. In 1950, the 60-year-old SS Manitoulin was replaced by the SS Norgoma, the name being derived from North District of Algoma, again designed and built by the Collingwood Shipyards Limited. Unlike the Norisle, the SS Norgoma was designed primarily as a package freighter and passenger steamship, specifically for the Georgian Bay and North Channel route. But, reflecting the practicality of its Gray County ownership, like its predecessors the Norgoma could also transport cars if only a limited number of them. The Norgoma operated on five-day Owen Sound to Sault Ste. Marie and weekend Owen Sound to Gore Bay cruises, which remained very popular throughout the 1950s. However, the OSTC depended on its package freight trade to balance its books. By the early 1960s, that trade had largely dried up. The formerly isolated ports along the Turkey Trail were now served by roads and trucks. For some years, largely in order that their historic service could continue to the delight of tourists and Manitoulin Island communities and their leaders, OSTC was heavily subsidized by the federal and provincial governments. The volume of car and passenger traffic on the Tobermory South Baymouth run, however, continued to expand year by year. In 1962, Collingwood Shipyards converted the SS. Norgoma to diesel power, thus she became M.S. Norgoma, and in 1963 she began renewed life as a car and passenger ferry, sister in trade to the S.S. Norisle, and occasionally, at the beginning, to the old M.S. Normac. Traffic continued to mount on the ferry run. The Government of Ontario, through its Crown Corporation, the Ontario Northland Transportation Commission, acquired the Owen Sound Transportation Company in 1974. This development resulted in the SS. Norisle and MS. Norgoma joining MS. Normac in retirement, and a new vessel being commissioned. The MS. Kai Chiman. Translating to. Big Canoe. In Ojibwe, was the largest vessel to every operate on the route. At the time of her commissioning, she was one of Canada's newest state-of-the-art ferries, having been designed by British Columbia naval architects and built on Georgian Bay by the ever-reliable local Collingwood shipyards as one of their last hulls. Her service continues the story of that of her distinguished and well-loved predecessor ships. Topic. Ships of Owen Sound Transportation Company Limited MV Niska 2013 Present Muswani to Moose Factory